Okay, so you want him to feel emotionally addicted to being around you so that he can't stop thinking about you. He loves being with you. He can't wait to see you again. And he thinks about you as the first thing that he does when he wakes up in the morning and the last thing that he does before he goes to bed at night. Today, I'm going to tell you exactly what to say and do in order to make a man feel addicted to you. My name is Matthew Coast and welcome to Commitment Connection. If I, if you want my whole system, you can get my whole system for free. Just go over to the foreverwomanformula.com and pick up a copy. It'll teach you all about how to attract and keep a man who really loves you and sees you and cherishes you. So the foreverwomanformula.com, go check it out. So I want you to think about the idea of gambling. When somebody gambles, they get addicted to it because sometimes they're winning, sometimes they're losing, sometimes they're losing and then they win, sometimes they win and then they lose. And that is something that I call the principle of unpredictability. By the way, if you're, if you're with us right now, make sure that you say hi in the chat and let us know where in the world you're watching this from because it's really cool to see all these women all over the world watching these live streams. And so the, the gambling idea here, the idea of unpredictability, what it does is it creates unresolved emotional tension and it keeps them in suspense and then there's a resolution to it. And that is what creates attraction. That's what creates addiction in a human being. And so that's what we're going to be talking. I'm going to show you exactly how to do that today. And the technique that you're going to be using to do this is something called push-pull. Maybe you've heard of this before. I'm going to teach you exactly how to use push-pull in order to create addiction in a guy. And so push, push-pull is push, right, which is pushing away from you. And pull is pulling him in. So you can just think of pushing and pulling. And that's just in the physical sense, but we're also going to be talking about it in other senses as well. And you're going to get a full understanding of what this really means. And so this is supposed to be a fun and playful technique. So I just, I want to remind you of that. So love is playful and fun. It's not serious. If you're really serious when you're doing this, there's something wrong and you shouldn't be doing it in a serious manner. This is fun. You're taking him on an emotional roller coaster ride. It's going to be a lot of fun for him. It's going to be a lot of fun for you. And so it's basically like giving him a taste of something that that's really good and then pulling it away from him. Or uh, you're never going to get this and then giving him a little bit of a taste of it, right? And so that's that's the emotional roller coaster ride. It's like this up and down motion. You're you're it's this taste, you're getting it, it's fun, it's safe, it's it's scary, it's exciting, right? You're you're taking him through a roller coaster of emotions. And there's three types that I'm going to be talking to you about today. The first one is verbal push-pull. The second one is combination. And the third one is a macro level. And so real quick, I want to go over some mistakes that women make when they're doing this. The first one is going too much to an extreme with it, right? Because it this can make him think that you're completely insane or it can make him feel like he he doesn't really like you and you're too crazy and he, he doesn't he doesn't want to be around you if you're too extreme, right? You don't want to be too extreme. You also don't want to insult him. You don't want to get too personal. You don't want to be disrespectful with it and you don't want to do it all the time. Like I said, if you're if it's too much, if you're doing it too much, if it's too high and too low, if you're always doing it, he's just going to think you're a crazy person and he's not going to be able to deal with it and he's going to feel like you guys are going to be fighting all the time. And so <laughs> you don't want to do that. You want to do it fun, you want to do it playful and you want to do it sparingly. At first you can do a little bit more, but over time you want to do it a little bit more sparingly. It's a fun, flirty teasy, playful technique that you do, and you'll get a little bit of a better sense of it here in a second. You also don't want to do this to get back 
at him with something or about something. It'll just make you look desperate. Trust me, don't don't try doing that. And you also don't want to do this if you have no social intelligence, right? So if, if you, you're not aware of what's going on with him or what you're doing or you're completely like socially kind of not aware and not really adjusted, you probably don't want to do it or you want to do it very to a very, very small amount or do it very sparingly. Okay, so let's talk about it. So the first one is verbal push-pull. And so the first way that you're going to do this is, so this is the actual verbal technique of doing it. So you can do it with a lot of different things. And the one that I'm giving you is about coffee or tea. So the way that you do it is you go, important question, coffee or tea? And then he answers whatever he answers. And you look at him and you go, oh, you're one of those people, right? And then you go, just, and if, if he says what you like, then you go, just kidding. I like that too, right? And so, so basically you're doing this thing, right? You're, you're creating these emotions, right? You're going into serious land where you're like, important question, coffee or tea? And then he answers and then you're like, oh, you know, like, and, and basically it's like yeah, a little bit over exaggerated. You can do it where it's not over exaggerated as well, where you're like, oh, okay. You're one of those people. Right. And so basically it's, it's the push, right? You're doing the push. And then if you like it as well, you go, Oh, just kidding. I like it too. Right. And so it's, it's, you're letting him know that you're joking. And, and whenever you do push poll, and if you feel like maybe you might be going a little bit too much into serious land, you can always say, just kidding. Right, I'm just kidding with that. I'm just kidding, right? Because sometimes I like to make jokes a lot, and sometimes I'll run into people, and they won't understand my humor, especially if they're not from where I'm from. And <laughs> so sometimes I'll have to say, "Hey, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding with that," right? So that they understand that I'm joking. And so that's that's a great way to relieve tension is just to say, "Just kidding. Just kidding," right? And and if you like it too, you're like, "Just kidding. I like it too." Or or you could also say, if you're like, "Hey," Uh, you know, important question, coffee or tea? And he's like, coffee, and you like tea, and you're like, oh, coffee, really? No, it's okay, it's okay. We can still be friends. I just, I won't tell anybody about your poor life choices, right? And so you're messing with him, right? And it's kind of this playful kind of banter that you you have going on. So you're asking him a question. And, and one of the things, one of the reasons why this works well, especially with ideas like coffee or tea or other things that are not like really important questions is it's, you're, you're doing it, it's a joke, right? Obviously you don't really care that he likes coffee and you like tea or whatever the scenario is or that he he likes coffee and you think that he should like tea or whatever it is because it's not a very serious topic. And so it's a fun, playful thing and you're talking about something that's not really important, but you're still kind of messing with him. And the reason why, th there's a whole bunch of psychological reasons why this works. One is it shows that you're not putting him on a pedestal because you're willing to mess with him. If you saw a guy and you're really totally in love with him and you're like, oh my God, this is the most amazing man I've ever met in my life, you're not gonna mess with him like that. And so a guy knows when you're messing with him that you're not putting him on a pedestal. And so it, it kind of raises your value in his eyes because you're like, hey, we're on, we're on an even playing field because I'm comfortable enough with you to mess with you. And so there's that, there's the emotional roller coaster that you take him through. And so, like I said, you, you do this playfully. And if you take it too far, you can always say, just kidding. Just kidding, I like it too. Okay, we can still be friends. I just won't tell anybody about your poor life choices. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. I'm just kidding, right? And you, you can do that if, if he, if either he, you can tell he's not getting the joke, right? Or, or if you just kind of aren't sure, you can always do that. So here's another one. Here's the second example. You're doing, has, ever, has anyone ever told you, you have a really evil smile and it's kind of hot, right? And so basically what you're doing here is you're, you're, you're like, hey, has anybody ever told you you have a really evil smile? And it's kind of like this ambiguous, kind of like, is, is, she, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? But it's kind of got this slightly like bad thing to it because it's evil. And then you're like, it's kind of hot, right? And so basically what it's saying is that you like it. 
And so it's, it's created that tension and then you're relieving it, right? And that's, that's the kind of, that's what you're going to be seeing here with the verbal push pull is you create the tension and then you relieve it. And, and it creates kind of this emotional effect that you have. And like I said, you don't want to do all these things all at the same time. You, you want to space them out. And so uh, here's another one that you can use. You're such a nerd, right? You can be like, oh man, you're such a nerd. And I kind of like it. And so again, you're doing a, you're saying something that's kind of ambiguous as to what you're meaning. It could be good. It could be bad. A lot of times people are like, you know, you're such a nerd, right? Like it's kind of this bad thing. You're such a nerd. And then you have this kind of pause in it. They call it a pregnant pause. And then you say, and I kind of like it, right? And so you're, it's the pull, it's the pull in. So it's kind of the push and then the pull. And so the, this is what flirting is like. This is what teasing is like. It's fun, it's playful, and it's kind of this push-pull thing that you're doing here. And it's fun. It creates the emotional roller coaster. It tells him that you're not taking things seriously. You're, you're in this fun, playful mood, and you're not putting him on a pedestal. So another one that you can do and is if, if you're like really savvy and you're like, you're like, hey, I want to approach this guy over here and, you know, he's hanging out, but he's alone on his phone or something. And I know, I know a lot of women are, we, we've been having this debate in the community about should you, should you approach guys? Should you not approach guys? I'm, if, if you're in a situation where you, you don't think this guy's going to approach you and you really want to go and talk to him, I'm of the opinion that it's totally okay and totally cool because, I mean, what do you really have to lose? You know, if he says no, it's like, okay, well, it wasn't going to happen anyway. And if he starts talking to you, then it's really awesome. So you, if you approach him and he's on his phone, you can always say something like, hey, you're not allowed to be on your phone in here, right? And, and basically you're, you're like, it, the reason it's funny is because you're, there's almost no scenario, unless you're like at work or something, there's almost no scenario where you're going to be somewhere where he's not allowed to be on his phone. And sometimes if you come up and you're really serious about it and you're like, hey, hey, you're not allowed to be on your phone in here, right? And <laughs> like, what will happen is he, he might even think it's serious and be like, whoa, wait, what, what, you know, like what's going on? And then you just smile, right? And you go, no, I think you're cute. I was just messing with you, right? Or you can just say, I was just joking. I'm just messing with you. But if you say, I think you're cute, right? Basically, you're showing him some interest and you're doing that pull. And so that's the push-pull, right? That's the verbal push-pull. As you do something and it could be ambiguous, it might be a little bit of a push, and then you do a pull in with it as well. And the more that you get better at it, the more you can just push and you don't even have to worry about the pull unless, unless you notice that you need that pull in there. And that's where kind of that social calibration thing comes in. But you can just do the push sometimes and it's fun. But you want to have that pull in there and you want to mix it up sometimes when you're doing push and pull. So that's the verbal stuff. If, if, you're, <laughs> if, you, if, you're, if you get what I'm talking about right now, say I get it in the chat. If you don't understand what I'm talking about, Ask a question in the chat. I will answer all the questions at the end. So let me know. So we're going to, next one is the combination. First one was verbal push-pull. Second one is combination push-pull. So with combination push-pull, the one that I'm going to teach you is you're going to physically pull him in while verbally pushing him away. So that's what it's going to be, is it's a combination of physical and verbal and with the physical, you're going to be pulling them in. And with your verbal, you're going to be pushing them away. And so here's what this looks like. When you pull him in close, you pull him in close and you go, I hate you so much right now. <laughs> right? And so you're like, you can do it when you're hugging and you're just like, oh, I, just, I just hate you so much right now. Right. And, and the reason the place that you do this is like if he's been messing with you or he's got to leave or whatever. Right. You can have any reason to hate him right now. And so, again, you want to make sure it's playful. You're being playful with it. Right. You're not like, I hate you right now. You're like, oh, I hate you so much right now. Like, ah. Oh do you really have to leave? Right. Or whatever, whatever the scenario is, right. You're, you're, it's, it's a tease. You're, you're doing the playfulness. You're, you're pulling him in, but you're verbally pushing him away. Oh, I hate you so much right now. And, and you notice that 
the I also set another poll right after that, which is, do you have to leave right now? Do you really have to leave, right? Which is kind of a poll because you just pushed them away and then there's a poll. And you can do a combination of these things where you do them on top of each other, one after another, and you're pushing and pulling and it's and it's kind of this emotional thing. And, and it kind of confuses them because you're like pulling them in close, but you're like telling them you hate them. And he's like, wait a second, what's going on here, right? And so you're like kind of messing with his emotions there. And again, you're 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 showing him that, that he's not too much on a pedestal for you to mess with them. So another example, let's do another example. And so the next example is, so you, oh, okay, so this one's actually a, yeah, so, so you're going to do the verbal, you're going to do the verbal pull, and this is a combination of a verbal and a physical push away. And so what you do is you go, I like you way too much right now. You just get just get away from me, right? And you kind of like push them away, push them away, and then you're and then you can also come back and go. You know what? No, no, no. Come back over here. I like I like talking to you, right? And so you're doing this kind of messing with him thing where you're you're pushing him away, you're pulling him in, you're pulling him in, and then you're pushing him away. And that's that's the whole thing. That's why they call it push pull, and that's what you're doing here. And the, the best way to kind of get good at this is to just practice it and even like come up, take some of these things and just think about it and say it and just, you know, think about it when you're, before you do it and then you do it and it's just fun. It's fun and playful and it's, it's enjoyable. He'll like it. And like I said, if, if he's not, then there's, you're doing something wrong and you can always say, just kidding. And let's say that you've been dating for a little bit and you pull him in and you kiss him and you're like, you should go. You should you you should get out of here, right? And so you're like pulling him in, you're kissing him, but you're verbally telling him that he should leave. You're like, get out. You you have to get out of here. Like you you need to go. You need to go right now. And you just like pull him in and, and hug him, and you're like, oh, get out of here, you know. And then you pull him back in, and and that's that's push pull, right? And it kind of plays with his emotions, and it makes him feel all these different things. And so, yeah. And so the last one, the last way to do it. And again, I just wanted to mention, if you want my full system for how to attract a great guy into a great relationship, make sure that you go to the foreverwomanformula.com and check out getting my program there for free. So the last one is macro push-pull. And so this is if you're taking it to a higher level. And there's there's other kind of ways to do push-pull and, and maybe I'll do some videos and some stuff on that later. But macro level is thinking about it on a little bit of a higher level, almost like hot, cold, but not quite as extreme as that. And so what you do is you're on a date. And so again, when we're talking about pushing, we're talking about like pushing them away or being disinterested and then pull as in kind of like pulling them towards you or being interested. And so what you do on a date is you go and you're leaning forward and you're listening and you're talking and you're really engaged and you just love what he's doing. And then, you know, maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, half an hour into it, you start leaning back and you're like hanging out and just kind of listening to him and you're showing less interest in him and you're letting him talk more and just allowing him to have that conversation and then may maybe later you're kind of moving in forward again and showing more interest and, and talking to him more right? And, and being more engaged and stuff. And so, and so that, that's kind of what it is on a little bit of a higher level. And you can do that throughout the date, right? And, and it kind of, in his mind, when he's watching this, right? And because guys, a lot of times, especially if they've learned any dating advice, which a lot of guys have out there, right? I was talking, I was talking to this guy today, actually, who I've been working with on doing some business related stuff as far as marketing with my business. And he was telling me how he was involved in the dating industry a long time ago. And, and I meet people all the time, guys all the time who are familiar with dating. And so if he's familiar with dating, and even if he's not, he'll probably be paying attention to how you're acting and being like, okay, is she into me? Is she not into me? Like what's going on here? And so when you're leaning forward, he's like, oh, she's totally into me. And then when you're leaning back, he's like, oh, is she still into me? Right? And you're kind of doing it back and forth throughout the interaction and the date that you're having with him. And so he's like, 
I'm not sure when she's into me. I'm not sure when she's not. Did she get into me and then not into me? Because, you know, sometimes women lose interest and then they gain interest and he's not really sure. And so you're, it's, you're kind of playing, like I said, you're taking him on that emotional roller coaster ride of unpredictability where you're, you're having him feel all these different emotions around this. And it can be really, really powerful to creating attraction and creating tension and making him really, really into you. And so you can even do it on a higher level. And sometimes you'll hear about guys doing this. Maybe if you're in our community where a guy like is like when he's with a woman, women will say this all the time. They'll be like, when he's with me, it's like he's so sweet and kind and he says all these loving things and he tells me that he loves me. But then he's like gone for a few days and he has no contact and then he like shows up again and he's like with me and and he's like into me and doing all this stuff, right? And so basically what's happening there is she's experiencing kind of this hot, cold push-pull on a macro level where she's, he's totally into her and she's like, oh my God, this feels so good. And then all of a sudden he's gone and she's like, what happened? Where'd he go? And then he's back. And like I said, you don't want to do this in an abusive way. You don't want to do it in an, a manipulative way. You don't want to do it in any of those kinds of ways. But when you're with a guy, you want him to feel really good. And you want him to feel great emotions when he's around you. And you can take him through those, those that roller coaster ride of emotions. And then you're gone. And, and that's one of the things that I talk about with the principle of scarcity, if you're familiar with some of my other work, where you're not trying to be in contact with him all the time. You're giving him a chance to miss you and him sitting there thinking like, oh man, when we were together, it was so amazing. And like, I can't wait to see her again. Like, why hasn't she reached out to me? She's so awesome. Like, ah, oh, you know, and so he gets those feelings and he gets those emotions when you're doing these things, right? You're, he's hanging out with you and he's having a great time and then you're gone and he's like, ah, oh, I wish he was there, right? And he's thinking about you all the time. And that's, that's what creates that, that addictive emotion that he has in his mind where he's thinking about you all day and night and he can't wait to be with you again. And so that that's everything that that's macro level combination and verbal push pull. And so if you if you get it, let me know that you get it, that you get it, say you get it in the chat. If you don't get it and you have questions about this, if you have questions about your situation, if you have questions about anything, go ahead and feel free to put them in the chat and I will get to all of your questions. And so again, verbal push pull, right? The co important question, coffee or tea, right? And you're, you're kind of messing with them and then you pull them in. Oh, you're one of those people like, just kidding. I like it too. Right. And you're just, you're playing with them and it's fun and it's enjoyable and you're having a great time combination. You're pulling them in, but you're like, Oh, you got to get away from me. And, and maybe you even push them away after that. And then you're like, no, 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 come back come back. I want to see you again, right? And it's, it's this fun, playful thing. It's a natural thing that people do when they're really into each other is they do this. It's not it like people, sometimes people talk about it being manipulation and it can be manipulation, but it can also be a natural way that people interact with each other when they're really into each other. And then the macro push pull, which is, you know, kind of leaning back and being like uh, not totally disinterested or like looking off, looking at your phone or anything like that, but just leaning back and letting him talk and then being into it and being really engaged in the conversation. And then there's even higher levels of it, which it, again, like I said, if you go too extreme or too dramatic with this, he can think that you're crazy or that you're playing games with him or something like that. And you want to be subtle and you want to use it sparingly. And especially if you've never done this kind of thing before, you want to definitely use it sparingly just to test it and see how it goes, right? Before you, you start jumping into it. So that's it. Again, if you want my entire system on how to attract and keep a great guy in a relationship where he loves you and sees you and absolutely cherishes you, make sure that you go to theforeverwomanformula.com and pick up my entire system there. So that is that. Oh, Helena is the first person. <laughs> Helena is the first person in our chat. I was just talking to Helena today, actually, and 
she, we were talking about a lot of the business stuff that we do together and, and all the different things that we do. And, and so I was telling Helena that, that she, that I, I don't ever want her to not kind of be in this with me because she really kind of completes me. And, and <laughs> Helena, you complete me. You complete me. <laughs> uh, I know she's going to love that. And so it, it's one of those things where uh, with with Helena, like I, I really feel like she she's kind of like the other half of this business where she's got all this like feminine stuff and, you know, all, all this work that we do. She has all this feminine stuff. I'm more of the brainy kind of like tactical kind of guy and strategy kind of guy. And she's more in her feelings and stuff. And it's really cool. So... It's awesome to have you here, Helena. Hello, 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 everybody. If you have any questions, make sure you ask them in the chat. So Julie Tree says, have you lost weight? You look so good. I'm not, you know, I don't know. I was just in Italy for a week and all they have in Italy is pizza and pasta and sandwiches. So I'd be very surprised if I lost some weight. Mary says, you can't make someone addicted to you. Of course you can of course you can. <laughs> you can't make someone addicted to you. It's so funny. Of course you can make someone addicted to you. Julie Tree says, I have no social intelligence help. <laughs> well, it's, you know, it can take some time sometimes. And, you know, I'm, I'm an introvert. And being an introvert, it can be difficult. But over time, if you work on it, you can definitely, you can definitely pick it up. So Columbus, Michelle says, I love this. Texas, Entisar says, love all your videos. Very informative. You, well, thank you for loving all of my videos and I'm glad that you enjoy them. Kathy says, what if he says those things to you? How should we respond? Just be playful and have fun with him, right? That's what you want to do is you want it to be playful and fun, right? If he messes with you, it's like, ah, you know, and you can even recognize it and be like, oh, you totally got me there, right? If he's doing push-pull on you and you're connecting with him and he's having all these emotions, you're like, oh, you know, and, and just just have fun with it, right? Like I said, love is playful and fun. As soon as you take it serious, it turns out of this place of creating attraction and building tension and having fun and it turns it into this other weird thing. And so you want to have fun with it and be playful with it. And you can even take it a little bit even more like, and sometimes you can pretend like you're being serious, right? And you're like, he does something and you're like, oh, I can't believe you'd say something like that to me, you know? And, and he like tries to touch you and you're like, no, no. Right. And then he, he's like, he's like, oh, you know, like what? And you can tell he's starting to get serious and you're like, I'm just messing with you. Right. And you're just, it's playful, right? It's push pull. It's teasing. You're Back and forth, it's that banter. That's that's the tension that you create with another person, with a man, when you're connecting with them, is you're just having fun with each other and you're playing with each other and you're messing with each other and it's just, it's fun, right? It's, it's a lot of fun. Liz says, what if he doesn't go along with the fun? He's taking it all serious. Well, like I said, you can... If, if you're doing push-pull and he's taking it seriously, you can always say, hey, I'm just messing with you. And if he's not, like if he continues to take it seriously, it could be one, right? Like what I was talking about before, where I said you have to be, you have to be in touch and in tune with what's going on with him and where he is, right? If he just had some kind of serious situation and you kind of mess with them and you're like, hey, you know, like let's have some fun. And he's just like, I don't want to have fun, right? You, it, it could be like, okay, well, He's in this serious place and he needs to be in this serious place. And so I'm not going to mess with him right now. However, if he's just doing it, if he's just always serious and he's just always serious and you're trying to have fun with him and he's just always serious, it's like, okay, well, is this, you know, I don't know how long you've been seeing this guy, but it's like, okay, well, how, you know, is this, is this really what I want? Is this really what I want to experience in a relationship is someone that's always serious all the time and can't just have fun with me and, and be playful and that kind of stuff. So it, it's, it's one of those things where you just have to kind of gauge what's going on in the scenario, which is why it's important to have social calibration when you're doing this so that you don't get yourself into a weird situation where he's taking everything seriously because 
he, he's coming from a serious place and he's not willing to get into a playful and fun place and you are right and so it, it could be that other things are needed if you are in a relationship and he's in a serious place it could be that that maybe you guys you know because it's one of those things where sometimes women come and they're like okay I'm in this relationship, it's been going on for seven years, and I'm trying to do this fun, playful thing with him, and he's not doing fun and playful with me, and it's like, well, you guys have so much baggage and <laughs> other things going on in the relationship that it might be necessary to approach it from a different si situation than, hey, all of a sudden I'm having fun and joking around and you're being serious because because there's so much there that's that's been working or unraveling or so much whatever is there from all the time that you've been seeing each other. So it kind of depends on your situation and what's going on with you. Kathy says, can I cancel a date and say, I like you too much. I have to stay with you. I have to stay away from you as a joke. Then tell him the real reason I have to reschedule or is that too much? No, that's great. That's, that's exactly, Kathy, that's exactly what I'm talking about. So you're like, hey, you know, you're like, hey, I have to cancel. And he's like, well, why? Right. And you're like, I just, I just like you too much. And I really have to stay away from you. And you're just like, no, I'm just, I'm messing with you. I've got, I've got this dentist appointment that just came up and I have to go and see him because he's going on vacation and I really need to get this tooth fixed or what, right. Whatever the scenario is. Right. And uh, again, though, the, the whole cancellation thing, you don't want, especially if it's new, you don't want to be canceling on guys. Sometimes I hear some women talk about like canceling on a guy, like on a date, and they're like, oh, cancel on a date. And there's experts out there that'll say that. I don't recommend that you do it, especially if you're newer to, to dating him because it it can send him the wrong signal where all of a sudden he thinks, that you don't actually like them. I mean, obviously, if you have a legitimate reason why you definitely have to cancel it, you know, you have to do what you have to do. But I, I wouldn't say that you should cancel dates regularly or intentionally or whatever. So Mary says, Matt, you need to quit. You need to stop streaming. I'm liking this too much. Exactly. Get it. You get it, Mary. You get it. Rochelle says, what's the best thing to do or say when he becomes distant all of a sudden. The best thing to do is to give him space. That's the absolute best thing you can do if he becomes distant all of a sudden is to just give him space and let him come back to you, right? There's the, uh, I don't know if you, one of the other live streams I talked about the cat, the cat metaphor, where it's like, it's like being with a cat, right? If you have a cat and you want to pet the cat and you walk up to the cat and the cat like is you know, all, whatever, and you come up and he kind of like runs away from you and you're like, oh, and you kind of chase after the cat. The cat will continue to keep running away from you and then you'll end up chasing the cat off into the wild and he won't come back to you for a long time. Whereas if you come up to the cat and the cat kind of runs away from you and you like, you're like, oh, okay, cool. You know, you don't want to be petted right now and you like go off and you sit down, the cat might come up to you and jump on your lap and then you're petting them and it's like you know that that's when you pet the cat is when the cat comes to you not when the cat's running away from you right so if he's running away you don't want to chase him if he's running away you want to pull back as well because that creates a vacuum and it creates almost like this magnetic pull where all of a sudden he's over there and he's like, oh, I haven't heard from her for a while and he's got his own things going on or whatever and he's like, I want to see her. Whereas if you're chasing after him, he's like, oh, she won't leave me alone and she's trying to contact me all the time and I, I've got these other things that I've got to do right now and so you'll go lower on the value list if you do that. Whereas if you pull away, all of a sudden you're creating that space and you're creating scarcity like I talk about in my Forever Woman program which I recommend that you go and get. There should be a link above or below this video so you can go check out the Forever Woman program. You should definitely get it. So, Jamie says, how can you do this if you are dating online? Well, my suggestion, I mean, I mean, you can do it if you're dating online. My suggestion is that you don't because it can be taken the wrong way. It can really easily be taken the wrong way. 
And so my suggestion is that for most guys, you don't need to do this when you're doing online dating. Most guys, that, so if you look at online dating, this is kind of how it looks, is a guy gets on to online dating or on Tinder or some kind of app, and a woman gets on online dating or Tinder or some kind of app. And when the guy gets on there, he has nobody to talk to. And so he has to go searching for women that he's interested in. And he will contact a bunch of women. Most of them won't respond back to him in most places in the world. And so he has to contact a lot of women in order for one of them to respond, no matter what he says to her. And for the women, when she gets on, she's usually bombarded with messages from dudes. And they're talking to lots of guys. Guys start figuring out, okay, there are certain women that I can talk to that are going to go on dates with me. There's certain women that aren't. And so if you want to go out on a date with a guy from online, the important thing isn't in doing push-pull and making him feel all these things over text message or over online. The important thing is that you guys, is that either you get on the phone or you guys meet up. Those, those are the most important things. And there's other things that you can do, like you should probably do some screening of a guy before you go out on a date with him or before you even talk to him on the phone. However, it's not really all that necessary because he's trying to, he's, his movement is already moving towards you. And so you just want to catch the guys that have movement that are moving towards you and then bring them in, right? Like th there's a lot of women that'll talk to me and they're like, oh, how do I text all these amazing things and message all these amazing things that get, make guys obsessed with me and, and all this stuff, right? And, and it's one of those things where if you're doing online stuff, it's like, if he's got a ton of different things going on and his kind of attra his his attention is spread out all over the place, you what you want is a guy that kind of narrows in on you and is really interested in you and talks to you. You don't want some guy that's kind of all over the place and he's you know doing all these things. You you want which is why you want to get to the meetup or the phone call or the voice the. Uh, the video chat as quickly as possible. That way you can you can actually meet him in person because that's where really the magic happens. That's where the real connection happens. That's where you can really kind of do these things really well. You can do them over the phone and online and over messenger and all that kind of stuff if you want to, but I, I don't recommend it. I just don't recommend it because you're, you're missing out on so many things and you're not really going to be connecting with them in the way that you need to be connecting with them if you meet them in person and or you meet him over video chat and then meet him in person. So that's that's my recommendation to you on that one. Haiti says, is that's really love you if <laughs> is that's really love you if the man he always thinking about you. Well, love is a little bit different than thinking than just thinking about you all the time. So Seb says online is not really dating. Linda says, oh, how sweet. I'm sure she feels loved. I'm sure. I hope she does. Liz says, he looks happy. Elizabeth says, what does it mean when an older man winks at you? <laughs> well, winking used to be this thing back in the day that a lot of people did. And it can mean a lot of different things. Typically, it used to be like this, like, flirty technique that people... <laughs> People used to do back in the day. I'm not. I'm better at f winking with my left eye. But it, it used to be a thing back in the day that people did a lot more to kind of flirt with each other, like, you know, or or if you're in a conversation and he's like, you're you're like you have a secret that you don't want to tell this other person, and you're like, yeah, this is true, and he like winks at you, and you're like, oh, okay. He's full of crap right now and he's telling me that, but that person doesn't know, right? And there's, it kind of depends on the situation that you're in as to what exactly it means. Mimi says, with that hot and cold macro tech, <laughs> if I'll be close to him and then I want to just disappear for a while, for how long I'll be safe to make him miss me without losing him? 
Well, it, it kind of depends, right? And it, it depends on what you're talking about. Like, you don't want to ignore him, and you don't want to completely disappear on him. I talk about this in detail in my program, The Forever Woman, at theforeverwomanformula.com. You should go check that out because I go over exactly how to do what you're talking about is the principle of scarcity. And so you don't want to be like messing with him. You don't want to disappear on him. You don't want to ignore his message that he sends you for days. You don't want to do any of that kind of stuff. You just want to make it more interspersed, right? So sometimes maybe you're responding right back to him immediately. Maybe you're sometimes you're waiting a couple hours it's not really that big of a deal because you've got a life and you've got things going on. Maybe if it's later at night, you wait until the next day to message him back just because that's you, you've got other things that you're doing at night. And so it, it's, it's one of those things where you don't want to make it too big and wide, especially if he's messaging you. But again, it's like, okay, so what do you mean? Are you talking about reaching out to him? And that's, that's a whole nother thing to altogether. My suggestion is that you go and pick up my program, a copy of my program at the forever woman formula.com. Cloud says, good to see you again, cutie Petuni. <laughs> I totally got you. I have to travel constantly for work. So I meet lots of guys in different cultures. The thing is some guys would not get it. Yeah, it's true. Some people don't get it. And so that's why you have the, like, I'm just messing with you. Like, I'm just, I'm just joking with you, right? And you can even poke them and kind of play with them, right? And you're like, I'm messing with you. And you're, like, oh. you're like, oh, are you going to be serious right now? Are you going to be Mr. Serious? You know, and it's like, you, you know, you're learning about, especially if you're out there dating, you're learning about him and you're playing with him and you're having fun with him and you're flirting with him. And that's what flirting is. It's playful. It's fun. It's, it's connecting on that playful level. It's not being serious and so you want to get him in that playful state because that's, that's where the fun happens. That's where he goes, yeah, you know what? I had a lot of fun with her and I was really kind of serious, but like she was like messing with me and whatever, right? And, and, and different, different cultures can be different and they can look at things in a different way. And so you have to be kind of in tune to that but also still have fun and be playful. And, and maybe a, a little bit of some of this is kind of an American thing that we do. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. No, no, it's not. It's not. I, I, I know, I know people do this all over the world. I've, I've seen people do this all over the world. And so it, it might just be in some cultures, it's less, it's less prominent, but everybody does this all over the world. It's, it's a flirting technique. It's a natural flirting technique that people do. So Doreen says, so what if you are both obsessed with each other? <laughs> Is it the same as being addicted to you? Yeah, I mean, this is kind of in the same realm as kind of obsessed, addicted. It's kind of similar kind of words there that you're talking about. Cloud says, I'm willing to play with it. I think that Cloud, Cloudy, Cloudy, Cloudy. Liz says, thanks, Matt. Jennifer says, you're welcome, Liz, by the way. You're welcome. Jennifer says, I have a guy that I have been talking with and getting to know we don't get to see each other often, just taking it light the past few months. Where can push pull come into perspective? Well, it can come into perspective in the entire thing. It can come into perspective in kind of just your interactions when you're talking to each other. Hopefully you're, you're getting on video chat or talking over the phone sometimes if you don't see each other very often. And if you, whenever you are talking to each other, whenever you're you know, there's, there should be periods of you're kind of talking and then you're not talking and then you're talking and you're not talking. And like I said, when you are talking, it should be like this thing where it's really engaged and you're having a lot of fun and you're really enjoying it. And then all of a sudden there's periods of not talking, right? And that's, that's part of this as well. So Sissy says, thanks, Matt. Enjoying this live. You look cute as always. Laugh out loud today. This is such a fun topic. Awesome. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Sissy. This is a fun topic. Sabine says, how to deal with a shy guy while being in your feminine energy. We have met and been talking for about three weeks. So when you're dealing with a shy guy, and, and so what I'm going to assume, Sabine, that you're talking about is you're talking about him being shy so he's not 
he, his energy isn't really moving forward as much and being in your feminine energy. I did a video recently about how to lean back how to lean back and get a guy to chase you. You should, my suggestion is that you go and watch that video, but also in terms of being in your feminine energy, that doesn't mean that you're always leaning back. That's a misconception about feminine energy and leaning back is that you should always be leaning back and that you shouldn't ever be doing anything and that you can't connect with a man and all that kind of stuff. And the reason that we usually talk about leaning back and doing that kind of a thing is because a lot of the women that come to us are usually leaning forward and they're doing everything. And so when they lean back, it's almost like they're up in the middle, right? And so the amount of kind of contact that you're doing with him should... Ideally, you'd look at around 20, 80, where 80% of the time he's reaching out to you and contacting you, 20% of the time you're reaching out and contacting him, but you also have to calibrate with whatever scenario you're in. And so my suggestion is that you don't ever go over 50% of the time where you're contacting him and kind of doing that kind of a thing. But also if you're talking about being in your feminine energy, there's ways to do it where you're inviting him, right? Because feminine energy is about receiving. It's about inviting. It's about being like, hey, I'm here. Come and get me, right? And so when you're doing that, you can connect with him in a way where you're, you're asking, for instance, one, one of the techniques that I talk about in the, the, the goddess community, the inner circle program is this idea of asking for help and you can ask for help and be in your feminine energy as long as you're not expecting something to happen from it and you're just connecting with him and you're asking him for help and you're creating kind of an invitation for him to come and connect with you more. And so you can, you can create invitations and it's not a big deal. And it's as long as you're coming from your feminine energy. And so what, you know, the interesting thing about your question, Sabine, is that, and I'm kind of going deeper into this right now, is that when you're saying how to deal with him while being in my feminine energy, what it, what it says to me is that you're not in your feminine energy and that you're trying to technique your way into your feminine energy, which is the opposite of being in your feminine energy. Because when you're in your feminine energy, you're not like, you know, how do I deal with him and do these things with him and get him to do these things, right? You're, you're connected, you're flowing, you're feeling your emotions, you're, you know, you, you can connect with him and your invitation and do all these things. And it's not a big deal because you're coming from a space of being in your feminine energy. And so it isn't a big deal. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about there, it might be good to kind of get connected a little bit more and do a little bit more time connecting with your feminine energy so you can feel where you're coming from when you do that. Faria says, nice, your all videos are very nice, very helpful, thanks. You are welcome. Julie Tree says, Matt, I grew up in a very abusive home and I just don't know how to play this game. It's very confusing. Okay. Ramona says, three years in and my boyfriend still does this. I listen to you and don't chase him, but the up and down is annoying and I'm tired. Well, it might be that you need to communicate with your boyfriend a little bit more and uh, my guess is that you're talking about the hot and cold. And so it, one, one thing that my suggestion is, is that you start creating abundance. And I talk about this all in my Forever Woman program, but create abundance in connection and create a, uh, abundance in kind of other people in your life so that you're not all your focus isn't on him and it's not so tiring and you're not just like, oh, this is exhausting for me to be with this guy who's doing this kind of hot, cold thing with me all the time. And so you're getting other things, you're getting those kind of connections dealt with in another way other than it just being getting all the connections done with, with him. If that makes sense. I, I don't know if that makes sense. It made sense to you, let me know. If it didn't, you can ask your question again. Helena says, Oh, haha, you complete me too. Oh. 
You complete me, Helena. You complete me. Delia says, Matt, love how to get an introvert or a naturally secretive person to open up more in the beginning of an online relationship. I'm reaching out first because I fear if I don't, he won't. Okay, so you're saying an online relationship, not dating app. So it sounds like you don't have a relationship. It's all online. So you're not, I mean, have you met this person? You know, I, I want to go back. I just did a video on, uh, are you in a long distance relationship or is it a scam? I want to make sure that you're not in a scam because a lot of women are. And so it's hard to tell what you're talking about and what you mean by an online relationship. Like if you're just starting to date some guy and he's a secret, he has all these secrets, like that should be a big red flag, not a how do I get him to open up online so that I can open him up about his secrets type of thing. It should be like, why are you being secretive with me and we're in this online relationship together. I mean, there, there's, it, it should be a red flag for you. One, if, if that's the scenario and you should be looking into it, like what's really going on here and what am I missing? That's what you should be thinking. Jamie says, thanks, Matt. Linda says, Matt question. How do you balance working with Helena and your relationship? I'm seeing a guy and at times we have to talk about his company and I'm kind of helping him with feedbacks and social media. Please advise. Well, I'm not sure exactly what your challenge is. So it, it depends on what, like, what's the problem that's coming up for you? What's the challenge that you're having? You know, the, how do you balance working with Helena and your relationship? I, I mean, that, that, that's such a broad topic that you'd have to you you'd have to tell me more about what your challenge is that you have going on and i'd i'd have to know more about that so silver steve says i am dating a guy who's 12 years younger than me i sense that he likes me through his actions all dates are nothing special happen. I asked him once if he likes me. He just answered yes. He's the one paid in the restaurant. I'm confused sometimes about my feelings about it, but I see he's happy like me too. Haha, ha, you're handsome when winking. <laughs> okay. All right. I didn't see a question in there. If you have a question, make sure you ask a question so I know I know what what you need answered. Elizabeth says if he misses hasn't seen you for a while, then gets all dressed up and touchy-feely with you. What is going on going through his mind? Well, he's what's probably going through his mind is that he wants to impress you and that he wants to connect with you. I don't know, you know, what kind of a relationship you guys have. So it kind of depends on the relationship. Like if you guys have been seeing each other for a while and he hasn't seen you for a while and he misses you and he gets all dressed up and he's all like all over you and stuff. It's because he, he's, he misses you and he wants to connect with you and he, he wants to kind of be all there with you. And that's, it's a normal kind of thing that a guy would want to do if he's, he's in a relationship with someone and he hasn't seen him for a while and he sees him and he's just like, oh yeah, what's going on? Oh, you're so sweet. Kiss you. You know, all that kind of stuff. That's normal if that's what you're talking about which I'm not 100% sure. Mimi's makeup says, thanks a lot, Matt. You are welcome, Mimi. If that's your name. If that's your, Mimi, if that's your real name. Jennifer says, yeah, we talk a bit on the phone and such. We both have busy lives. Okay, Elizabeth says, why do guys get intimidated by an attractive girl and why do some men get aggravated when a woman going about her day isn't smiling but has a resting bee face. As somebody who officially has resting bee face, I will have to tell you that it's not, it's not like that. It's not that men get aggravated that women aren't smiling, but 
there's kind of this thing, right, where guys give, right? And they're trying to give, and sometimes it comes off wrong. And it, it comes off like he's trying to manipulate you or he's mad at you or something like that. But really he's trying to he's trying to give to you and he's trying to like lighten you up and he's like, hey, you know, smile or whatever, right? It's a huge kind of me too movement thing that's going on right now. But guys, you know, they see a girl and they're like, oh, she's so beautiful. Like, you know, she's probably got so many great things. Like it'd be so amazing if she was smiling, which is my thought. I've never ever in my entire life been like, hey, you should smile, right? Like, you know, outside of like talking to clients or something like that and being like, yeah, you know, smile or whatever. And, or, or talking even with men, you know, in, in the men's dating industry, when I taught men to go and meet women, I, you teach them to smile before you walk up to a woman because it's a totally different experience. And so it's not that they're being aggravated by a woman like that. It's more like they want her to enjoy life and they want her to be beautiful and pretty. And that's usually kind of their gift. Like, yeah, you should be smiling, you know, like, Life is good, you know, like there's no reason to be angry or whatever. And the intimidated thing by an attractive girl, it's it's the same thing why women are intimidated by attractive men or by celebrities or anything like that, right? Like if a guy sees a really pretty woman, a lot of times he's going to be like, ah, she's out of my league. And, uh, you know, like I, I'm not even going to mess with it. Or, or he'll be like, oh my God, this is like... If I was with her, she would be like the perfect woman for me. And so for him, it's like, you know, how many times you meet and talk to a woman that is like absolutely gorgeous. It depends on where you are in the world and how many women are around and all that kind of stuff. And so guys can easily get intimidated by that, right? It's I don't see why you wouldn't understand why a guy would be intimidated by that. Like you see a beautiful woman and you're like, oh my God, she is just gorgeous, right? And you like over and it's like, oh, hey, you know, like you're really hot. You want to talk? Like what's going on with you? I can't think right now. I'm so nervous, right? And so guys, guys have insecurities. Guys have all kinds of different things going on just like women do. And so if a guy sees a really attractive girl, he might just be like, oh my God, like I'm not sure what to do here and get all nervous about it. Delia says, who else thinks Matthew looks like Jim Gordon from Gotham TV show? <laughs> He's got that cute nose and adorable eyes. I haven't seen that show. Kathy says, is he trying to make me jealous if he shows me pics of his coworkers, making sure I saw each pretty girl? I didn't react. It's possible. It might be. Cloud says, Matt, you are real bad. <laughs> Claude, John Claude. John, oh, it's Claude. So do you recall John Claude Van Damme martial arts actors? My name is his middle name in French is as common as Sam. Okay, well, I'm not sorry, Claude. I, I'm not familiar. I'm not very familiar with France and French names. So I apologize about getting your name wrong. I am really bad with names, though. <laughs> it's, it's a challenge. I'm working on it. So challenge, you know, we all have our own challenges. One of mine is pronouncing people's names, apparently. Elizabeth says, what do men consider a feminine woman? That is a huge topic. Actually, Helena and I did a whole video about feminine versus masculine energy that you can look up. And I suggest you go and watch that entire video because that's a huge topic that can be talked about for a long, long time. Linda says, I love leaning back. It's the most important thing. It's the most powerful thing for a woman to do. I love it. You feel free and liberated. Thanks to you, Helena and Adrian, forever grateful. This is a magical technique. Well, you are welcome. You are welcome. I don't know what all this stuff is, but that was just my personality coming out. Okay, Yvonne says, I learn so much. A abundance I have. But trying to get other things in place are tough. Yeah, it can be tough. Yvonne said, these are real men, not my scammer. Kind of closed the door on him. Okay, well, good. I'm glad you closed the door on scammers because you don't want to deal with those people. They're not, they're not people you want to deal with. Yvonne says, a lot of women do not talk about the fact they were scams. Yeah, I know. Working on a book on scamming to expose all I know. How can I reach you? 
You can reach me by messaging me at support at commitmentconnection.com. So Delia says, we met online, so he is a blogger and we grew closer, so he's a public figure and we're starting to like each other and we have a plan to take it to real life. Aha. So for now, we're in different countries. Well, I would... I would, you know, first off, don't ever give him any money, right? So we're back on the, we're back on the scam thing here, Dahlia. So first off, don't give him any money. Don't ever give him any money if, especially before you meet him or after you've met him or any of that kind of stuff or to get him to where you are or any of that kind of stuff. Don't give him any money. Go watch that video that I made about whether you're in a long distance relationship or whether it's a scam. Go watch that right after this. That's my suggestion. Sabine says, thanks. I have difficulty with feminine side. Worked on it for a year now. I work in a man's world being a cook, so I'm often in my masculine energy and have been used to doing everything. Yeah. That's, I, that, that's, that's, you know, like if I were you, Sabine, what I would do is I would make a study of it. And just spend some time learning about it. Just get really into it. We have a program that we sell about it. We've got some videos on our YouTube channel about feminine energy and learning more about that. I've done written some articles about it. There's there's a lot of stuff, but more than anything, really what it's important for you to do is spend a lot of time kind of switching into it and getting connected with it and feeling it and getting it so that you feel you feel comfortable in it again and just spend some time there and it can be really, really powerful for you. That that's what I've heard from women that have done it anyway. It's, it's been really powerful for me stepping into my masculine energy and spending a lot of time there. Joyce says, I understand long distance. My guy is a OTR truck driver. So his job 24 seven known each other for years and lost touch. He calls text when he can focus on us, slowly reconnecting with your advice. Thank you. You are absolutely welcome. I'm glad that you are using my advice for some great things. That's very important. Andrea says, Andrea says, how to make a man feel less stressed when dating? My guy said he is at times stressed when he is with me. Well, it depends on why he's feeling stressed. Right? So if he's feeling stressed with because he's a super introvert or because he has social anxiety, what he needs to do is learn how to manage his stress in an effective way. And so stress in terms of dating and being on a date with you means that he, he needs to figure out like what de-stresses him, especially in different scenarios. So for instance, I have social anxiety. I have horrible social anxiety. If I go out into a big crowd of people, then my social anxiety flares up and I will lose my mind after about an hour and a half. And I can start feeling it coming on. And the way that I get over that is I will either have to go and like sit by myself for a while or I can just sit and focus on one person and just have a conversation and make it just this thing where it's just the two of us. And so that helps me with my social anxiety and my stress when I'm in that kind of situation. But it kind of depends on what is stressing him and what is going on there. And so he needs to kind of do some study, just like I was talking about with Sabine. He needs to do some study into what his stress is. And so he needs to figure out what's making him stressed, right? Is it because for some guys it might be that he needs to do all these things? Because a, a lot of times, especially if he's a masculine guy and he's with a woman, he's like he's probably trying to take control of everything and make sure everything's good and everything's taken care of, and and he needs to know where all the plans are and, and how are things going to go. And if you say no to one of his plans, what's he going to do next? And so for a lot of guys, it can be really really stressful to do all these things. And so he needs to figure out what it is that's stressing him out so that he can pinpoint how to deal with that stress and how to relieve it and how to get into a space where it's not stressing him out 
as much. And so it really depends on what the stress is. He can, you know, there's a lot of different things that he might be able to do. So let's see here. Mandy says, do men show love through intercourse? I've read conflicting stories. They can. Yeah, absolutely. That's definitely one way to show love, especially depending on what his love language is. That That's one way that he can show love. But there's a lot of other ways that he can show love as well. And if he's the kind of person that shows love through intercourse, then there's he's probably a guy who is a touchy-feely guy or has physical physical intimacy as one of his love languages. And so it, it kind of depends, right? And so it depends on what, where, like there's a lot of different ways that a guy can show love. And so that can be one, but it can also not be one. And so it kind of depends. It depends on him, depends on how he's feeling, depends on where he's coming from, depends on how he shows love. And so, yeah, it could be. So Mandy says, when we do it in text, they have to get it, otherwise it's dry. Yep, that's exactly true. Okay, we have broken the hour here. So thank you everybody for being here again. If you want to, if you're really serious about getting into a great relationship where you're loved and seen and absolutely cherished by an amazing man, make sure you go to the foreverwomanformula.com. There should be a link above or below this video the Forever Woman Formula.com. Go pick up a copy of my program and it is changing lives. We're getting so many women that their entire their entire lives are changing. Their their relationships are changing, the way that their dating's changing, all from this program. So make sure you go and, and pick up a copy. And so thank you everybody for being here. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Thank you, everyone. You guys are absolutely awesome. I'm, I'm so grateful to have you as a part of our community here. Thank you for all the women that are part of our program and the Inner Circle program. Thank you all. You're absolutely amazing. And you're really... Uh, like all, it's so amazing to hear so many women going from these kind of situations where they're struggling and they're having lots of challenges to being in great, amazing relationships. And I'm just so grateful that I can be here and help you and be a part of your journey. So thank you so much. And I will speak with you again soon. And so everybody take care and we'll chat, what, next week or something? So that's it.